Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz, and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Saturday, the 6th of December 2025. There's plenty to talk about today, including an elevated and severe thunderstorm risk through parts of northern New South Wales and southeastern Queensland as we get through this weekend and into early next week, plus a developing tropical cyclone and well offshore from Australia, and the monsoon is beginning to bear down across the northern territory and parts of northern Queensland. All of the details on those, plus more coming up in today's weather forecast update. So if you are brand new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. But let's get stuck straight into things this morning with our situation over in the northeast of New South Wales and also for southeastern Queensland because thunderstorms are going to begin to build there from tomorrow afternoon onwards after a week-long period of drier and calmer conditions through these parts of Australia. So let's push these forecast models out. You can see later this afternoon and this evening a weak chance of a couple of thunderstorms here and there through parts of central New South Wales. There's barely any instability in the atmosphere so I really don't think severe thunderstorms are a possibility out here but it's going to get warm enough for one or two storms to develop and we may see a couple of pulsy thunderstorms very weak in nature around the Dubbo and the Cobar area and maybe one or two weak thunderstorms here through parts of the northern ranges uh, across the northeast New South Wales coastline but again I do not expect a high end day whatsoever today and severe thunderstorms are not expected at all. As we continue to roll this forward you can see tomorrow is going to be the lion's share of these thunderstorms for New South Wales. Some big ones are forecast across parts of the mid north coastline definitely towards the north of Tyree and inland from the Barrington Tops. We'll likely see a couple of strong thunderstorms as well run up the coastline adjacent to Port Macquarie through Kempsey, Coffs Harbour, then up towards Grafton, Yamba and Lismore. And a couple of strong thunderstorms are also going to be possible through parts of central and then in towards central western Queensland through the mid-afternoon hours around Charleville and Roma. Let's look at the forecast as we get out towards tomorrow afternoon. You can see some big time thunderstorms are going to be a possibility around Coffs Harbour. Also some good thunderstorms up here. I'll get to the Queensland risk in just a second. I just want to hammer home the New South Wales risk. It is a favourable environment for severe thunderstorms. We've got a very humid setup, some good levels of wind shear as well. And we do have a bit of a dry slot into the mid-levels as well, which you can see a little bit earlier on in the convective sounding through Sunday morning. Now, this is looking pretty healthy for a couple of severe thunderstorms. And then we take convective available potential energy values into account as well. You can see very high levels of instability currently setting themselves up through New South Wales, particularly through the middle hours of Sunday afternoon around two or three o'clock. Definitely just outside of Coffs Harbour, running up towards Grafton and Yamba in this area here is where the strongest severe thunderstorms are going to be possible. However, I would just like to say that we're not expecting these thunderstorms to run up the coastline in a massive march. Like what we saw on November 24th, those thunderstorms that smashed their way through Brisbane, we're not going to be looking at that tomorrow afternoon and evening, even though it is a somewhat similar setup with that southeasterly change. Dry line very close to the coastline, it just being over the border in towards New South Wales. But what we're going to be looking at here is with our mid-level winds coming out of the west, these thunderstorms are going to be driven off in this direction here following that arrow, which means even if they develop along the coastline, it's going to be very quickly before they get themselves offshore. And this is quite unfavorable for a New South Wales setup. It means that these thunderstorms are not going to have ample time to intensify uh, significantly, which means tomorrow's thunderstorm risk is very much isolated. So what this all means for the northern New South Wales coastline is anywhere within these black circles of this black outline can expect a high end thunderstorm tomorrow. They're def definitely going to be possible. But for the most part, it's going to be very hit or miss. A lot of these thunderstorms are going to dodge those major population centers along this part of the New South Wales coastline. And whilst we can expect a couple of dozen of strong, potentially severe thunderstorms, even a couple of very dangerous thunderstorms bringing giant hailstones and destructive wind gusts. They're going to be moving off in this direction here, which means for the most part, they could very well dodge some of these locations along the coastline. If you do get hit, they're going to be strong. If you do miss them, which is more likely than you getting hit, then it's going to be, or it will feel like a bit of a nothing burger tomorrow afternoon and evening. So in that outline, remain vigilant for severe thunderstorm activity. It's a good chance, but it's not a guaranteed chance at this point in time. We can't be guaranteeing our storm chances for any one location right now. Our convective forecast modeling tonight and early tomorrow morning will give us a much clearer idea as to what we can expect through New South Wales because right now it's shaping up to be a rather high end day for a few locations, particularly around Coffs Harbour and then up towards Grafton and Yamba, but we just don't know where the strongest severe thunderstorms are going to be specifically at this point in time. We know generally speaking across the northern New South Wales coastline, but for the most part we don't know exactly where they're going to be. The risk for Sydney right now is also pretty minimal. If we have a look at our uh, just baseline thunderstorm forecast on our lightning detector here, you can see Newcastle, Sydney and Wollongong all looking pretty clear, all things considered from severe thunderstorm activity. Sydney and Wollongong looking clear from thunderstorm activity full stop. And this is a good map to use because it shows us that we are going to be looking at thunderstorms moving in towards southeast Queensland as we get out towards Sunday night, tomorrow night, most likely arriving into the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area after about 9 or 10 o'clock at night. In fact, Brisbane it could be closer to 11 o'clock and then up into parts of the Glasshouse Mountains and the Sunshine Coast between 11 o'clock and 12 o'clock 
I really don't think the Sunshine Coast is going to see much out of these thunderstorms here, but we will be seeing a couple of squally thunderstorms roll in towards southeast Queensland, and a couple of these could bring damaging wind gusts and a brief period of heavy rainfall or two. Now, by the time we're talking about these storms getting out after about 10 o'clock, which is when they're going to begin to arrive into the Brisbane area, they're going to be very patchy and definitely on the weakening trend, which means for the most part, severe thunderstorm activity is a very limited chance right now, but definitely for Brisbane's southern and western suburbs, there is now an elevated chance of lightning activity and rainfall activity as we get out towards the later hours of tomorrow night and, to, and into the very early hours of Monday morning. Just for the northern suburbs, such as Strathpine and Caboolture, and then around Deception Bay up towards Braby Island, and then north into the Glasshouse Mountains and the Sunshine Coast, storm chances reduce very quickly the further north you get. It'll be interesting to see what pans out, and this is another case of I want to look at the convective forecast modelling before I make a rock-solid call on here, but I do expect the strongest thunderstorm activity to be around the northeast corner of New South Wales, into the border ranges, and potentially into the Gold Coast area and the Gold Coast hinterland, with the potential for a strong thunderstorm or two to move into the Granite Belt and the Darling Downs and parts of the Scenic Rim as well, and some solid storm activity is also possible along this line here, which is going to originate around the Charleville and St. George area down through here in the earlier afternoon hours before upscaling as it moves over Augustella and Roma into the evening hours, and then up towards Tambo, in June, Rolleston and Taroom by around 8 or 9 o'clock, and then thunderstorms dying off after about 9 o'clock in towards central Queensland, out in this area here adjacent to Rolleston, that sort of area. But definitely a couple of stronger thunderstorms are going to be a possible uh, are going to be a possibility out here. But for southeast Queensland and Brisbane, whilst this forecast does look rather gnarly at this point in time, I really don't think anything crazy or anything wildly severe is going to be coming through. If severe thunderstorms do develop, they will be along the Gold Coast area into the border ranges and parts of the scenic rim. This is where the severe thunderstorms are most likely to occur. But for the Brisbane area, I really don't expect severe thunderstorm activity to be a possibility right now. But this is a case of I want to look at the convective forecast modelling before I completely discount the severe thunderstorm risk. So another similar situation in New South Wales. This is your broader picture, your big picture outlook here. Squally thunderstorms are possible, which means lines of multicellular thunderstorms can be rolling through lots and lots of lightning, some strong wind gusts ahead of them, and then some heavy rainfall as well for a brief period of time. That's what we're going to be looking at through tomorrow afternoon and evening, or more like tomorrow evening out towards tomorrow night, rolling through the southeast Queensland area. But we just don't know exactly where the strongest thunderstorms are going to be. But like I said, the Burnett Forecast District and the Sunshine Coast all looking pretty likely to miss out at this point in time. A bit of a change from yesterday's forecast, but that's why we continue to look at the picture because things can and will change. It's an uncertain picture still uh, on the severe thunderstorm front, like I said, for the border ranges and the Gold Coast, but for Brisbane, 90% chance that severe thunderstorm activity is not going to develop tomorrow night. Still there, but it is a very, very remote chance and a very remote possibility at this point in time. Even our convective forecast modelling is not really favouring thunderstorm activity, but I would just like to say that maybe in the scenic rim, one or two thunderstorms between about two and five o'clock tomorrow afternoon. If we do see severe thunderstorms out here, that'll pretty much kill off the chances tomorrow night. Uh, but again, one situation that I want to be watching very closely over the coming couple of hours. As we push things out towards Monday, the situation does become a little bit more interesting. It is a little bit of a heads or tails type day on Monday. We might be talking about a thunderstorm or two out in towards parts of the Granite Belt and the Darling Downs. We may also be talking about a strong thunderstorm or two originating through parts of the Brisbane area and then up in towards the Burnett Forecast District and the Sunshine Coast. But if we are going to see severe thunderstorms, they're likely to be in this red outline here. Monday is still very much a day that I'm going to be taking with a hefty pinch of salt. If we have a look at our sounding here, we do have a very solid dry dry slot into the atmosphere and some half decent wind shear values. I mean, these aren't anything flash or anything to be writing home about at this point in time. 30 to 40 knots of bulk wind shear is not really enough to get supercell thunderstorms really going. So it's not overly the most healthy picture for these severe thunderstorms, but we do have a somewhat favorable environment for a couple of severe thunderstorms within this red outline here, which also includes Kingaroy, Toowoomba, and then down towards Warwick in Texas. We might see a solid thunderstorm or two moving up in this direction here. Uh, and sometimes these sleeper days can really catch us off guard. So Monday is going to be a day that I'm going to keep on the back burner and watching quite closely. But in terms of the risk for the Brisbane city area, pretty minimal at this point in time. Again, thunderstorms not really expected through Brisbane and the Gold Coast. Our convective available potential energy numbers are beginning to become a little bit healthier, though. I'm definitely out towards the west of Ipswich. These thunderstorms may be faced with a pretty healthy environment. Anything above 2,000 is where I start to uh, believe the severe thunderstorm risk is most certainly there. So Monday is now very much a day to watch for severe thunderstorm activity. But I refuse to comment any further on Monday's severe thunderstorm chats 
prices until I see some proper convective based forecast modeling tomorrow night. Uh, so you're just gonna have to bear with me on that one because the forecast picture is right now pretty uncertain. Looking things a little bit further long range, you can see severe thunderstorm activity is expected to take another hiatus from Southeast Queensland, but we are gonna be talking about an influx of moisture coming in from the Pacific Ocean, which means shower activity, rainfall, and then potentially tropical based thunderstorms in towards this part of Queensland are gonna become a possibility as we get out between the 11th of December out to about the 15th of December. A four day period of this rainfall and showery stuff is expected to kick off. And that should result in a crescendo of thunderstorm activity through parts of New South Wales and Queensland for at least a 24 or 36 hour hour period or so. Again, another factor of the forecast I'm going to be keeping close tabs on, but I'm not seeing anything standing out to me at this point in time. The GFS forecast model is generally speaking one of the forecast models that I would like to use in a situation like this, considering it is actually calling for a tropical cyclone in the Coral Sea. But this picture is very much dependent on the development and the movement of a tropical cyclone that could form into the Solomon Sea before heading down towards Vanuatu and New Caledonia. And just speaking of that, let's touch on that tropical cyclone right now. The Coral Sea may see its first tropical cyclone of the 2025-20 season just next week we might be talking about the development of a fully fledged tropical cyclone out here now wednesday that monsoon really does begin to strengthen across parts of the solomon islands into the solomon sea which means enhanced rainfall is going to be developing and we're going to see a broad area of low pressure begin to develop as we get out towards wednesday and thursday now this area of low pressure is going to continue to develop through thursday and friday and the fully fledged development of a tropical low or even a tropical cyclone is possible as early as next weekend around the 12th 13th or 14th of december respectively and then this this tropical cyclone is likely to head south down towards Vanuatu and New Caledonia, somewhere between these parallel black lines at this point in time. It could go for Fiji, it could go for New Caledonia, it may even go for New Zealand or Norfolk Island, but the latter two are still very much remote chance at this point in time. The risk for the Queensland coastline is below 1%. I'm not going to say zero because tropical cyclones, anything can happen, but for all intents and purposes, there is no risk to the Queensland coastline or to any of the Coral Sea Islands as well through parts of the Queensland coastline, including the Whit Sundays and some of those adults offshore from the far north Queensland coastline, including Willis Island, and then even down towards Norfolk Island and Lord Howe Island. The risk right now is pretty much zippity plonk. And that is because our jet stream is blowing a lot further north than it normally does at this time of the year. Again, because that monsoon hasn't arrived, this is kind of where the jet stream is flowing, which means high levels of wind shear lie kind of south of this second red line here drawn towards the north, which means if this tropical cyclone does take aim at Australia, it's likely to move to some of this sort of motion here, which means as soon as it crosses kind of south of a line of Cairns, it's going to encounter this very high levels of wind shear. So even if this system took aim at Australia, it's not going to make it to Australia because the jet stream will rip it apart. And I hope that that is just further comfort to know that this system is not going to go for Australia. Now, I believe that there is a cruise departing Brisbane on the 18th of December going towards Vanuatu or around that time frame. That's going to be fine. And I've seen plenty of comments about that over the last couple of days. In fact, it sounds like the whole cruise ship is coming to my page for the forecast on that. Now, this tropical cyclone is forecast to be further out into the South Pacific Ocean after about the 15th of December here. If it does get to a tropical cyclone status, it's likely to get up towards a strong tropical cyclone status. And you can see by the 18th of December here, Thursday, it is well down into the South Pacific Ocean. In fact, off this screen here and well away from Vanuatu and New Caledonia. And this leads me nicely on into the next part of the forecast update, which is the developing monsoon. This tropical cyclone will likely be associated with the monsoonal trough, and that will likely bring in the official start of the monsoon through parts of the Northern Territory in Australia. And that's going to result in developing low pressure system activity through parts of the Coral Sea, and that could result in an uptick in rainfall through parts of far northern Queensland as we get out to about Christmas time. Very typical for this time of the year. It's typically around the 15th or 20th of December, which is when this rainfall does start to become a feature on the forecast that that rainfall really does pick up through northern Queensland. On neutral or El Nino years, we typically see the start of the big wet rainfall uh, in far north Queensland coming in at the start of the new year after about the 1st of January. But considering we are now officially in a La Nina year, we typically see this rainfall come in around the 15th of December. So likely slightly behind schedule this rainfall, but it, that is kind of the year that we have been. Everything's run, been running a little bit late, late start storm season, but when it starts, it really does pop off. And that's kind of what we're going to be seeing here with the monsoon, I imagine, up in towards far northern Queensland, if that makes sense. Now, the GFS forecast model is the only one suggesting it, but we may see a broad area of low pressure here, some kind of rainfall depression up around far northern Queensland. And that is, again, pretty typical of this, of this time of the year. But may, that may give a couple of days of the first real rainfall up in towards far northern Queensland. And definitely around the, December, uh, the 20th of December may be a time to watch anywhere across northern Australia, because a couple of the major forecast models are now calling for broad areas of low pressure somewhere within this black outline. That may give a couple of hundred millimetres to a couple of locations over a 
a four or five day period. So again, another feature worth watching on the forecast models. And speaking of those features, another tropical cyclone is possible offshore from Western Australia and the Northern Territory. The Bureau of Meteorology is still holding firm with their 10% chance as we get up towards next week and likely by around Wednesday or Thursday, a tropical low will begin developing in the Timor Sea before heading out towards the Indian Ocean where it will eventually meet its demise again heading out towards the graveyard. But that will provide a couple of days of thunderstorm and showery conditions through parts of the Northern Territory and Western Australia, likely enhancing rainfall and convective activity around the north, top end of the Northern Territory and then through the Kimberley region as well. So an expect enhanced thunderstorm activity through there, more rainfall for one or two locations. And I imagine the road network is starting to struggle now through parts of the Kimberley region. We're beginning to get towards the cutoff type uh, stage. So keep uh, in mind uh, that over the next couple of weeks, because we are seeing an uptick in rainfall through some of these locations, roads may begin to lose uh, their well, feasibility to, tra to travel uh, across uh, through parts of the Kimberley region and the Northern Territory. So keep on top of the main roads websites through the NT and WA. It may be a, a problem traveling through parts of those regions. But apart from that, it is cool, calm and collected throughout the remainder of Australia. We do have a couple of shower and thunderstorm activity uh, moving through parts of Victoria. We are actually seeing a couple of thunderstorms this morning through parts of Victoria as these uh, winds and rain kind of sweep through uh, a bit of a weak cold front. Really, really shoddy on my winter weather right now, but that is giving a couple of showers and thunderstorms uh, through parts of Victoria. Unfortunately, we would like to see a little bit more rainfall through Tasmania. They've had a very bad start to their fire season with a couple of strong fires burning along the east coast. So it would be good to see a little bit of rainfall come through, but there's not really much in sight. Definitely nothing for the east coast and more dry lightning would very much be a problem. But uh, fortunately, thunderstorms don't look to be too much of a concern for the Tasmanian weather outlook over the next 24 hours. But these winds most certainly are not going to be helping. We'll keep close tabs on this situation and I may have some more updates over on the Facebook page if things do get dire through parts of Victoria and Tasmania. But I don't think that that is going to be a problem or a concern throughout the course of today. And then after today, those thunderstorms are moving up in towards northern New South Wales and Queensland, where they be then become a p potentially dangerous severe thunderstorm threat tomorrow afternoon and evening. But that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update. A bit of a longer one this morning. I'm probably going to start branching out to these 20 minute long forecast updates. If not, I will eventually just split them up and be doing those two videos per day. But I will keep on top of the situation, that's for sure. So make sure you are subscribed for your home of severe weather coverage moving out into our big wet months. That's going to do it for me today, though. I will have another update later today and plenty more information over on the Facebook page. So go and check that out as well. Link in the description. Uh, if you are brand new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. And of course, a massive thank you to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. I could not run the show without them. And as always, the support is massively, massively appreciated. But that's going to be all for me today. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.